In Psalm 139, it says, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? It's a Psalm of David, and notice that David asks two questions, not because he doesn't know the answer to the question, it's rhetorical. David knows that it's impossible to get away from God, to be lost from God. I like the way John Stott said it. He said it like this, this question expresses not the desire to escape, but the joyful astonishment that escape is impossible. I love that, it's so good. So God not only knows everything perfectly and completely, but God is everywhere. All of God is everywhere all of the time. And so David, he's trying to convey God's watching you, God sees you, God's with you. And so in this Psalm, David names three spheres where it's impossible to escape from God. The first is space. In verse eight, it says, if I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. So if I go out into outer space, galaxy and billions of stars, and no matter how far I go, God is there. Remember those Russian astronauts when they got up into space, they declared, we looked everywhere and God was nowhere to be found. But the Bible says, the heavens declare the glory of God. Day unto day, they utter their speech. And so God is everywhere. So space ain't no problem. Secondly, verse nine is speed. It says, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. That phrase, the wings of the morning, well, it's figurative for the speed of light. It is. When the sun comes up in the morning and it peaks over the horizon, light, it books at 186,000 miles per second. And so David is saying, if I can travel the speed of light in one direction to the uttermost parts, well, when I stop, God is there. But if I turn around and go the opposite direction and speed at the speed of light the opposite way, and wherever I stop, God is there as well. And so he is always there. You can't fool God. You can't flee from God. You can't run from God. Then he mentions under the cover of darkness as well. Notice verse 11 and 12 of Psalm 139. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me. And so, well, I'm gonna go hide in my closet. God can't see me, God won't know kind of a thing. Even the night, he declares, shall be a light about me. Ever notice that when sinners like to sin, it's usually under the cover of darkness, turn down the lights, but God sees. God knows. It says again, verse 12, to God, the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to him. You can't hide from God. And so all of this, it's a comfort to the believer. This psalm, it either um, delights you or it distresses you, knowing that God is always with me. And so God is with me all of the time. God is with me when I'm facing temptation. You know, the Bible, it says, there is no temptation that um, overtakes you, but what is common to man. And God is faithful and God will not allow you to be tempted above you what you are able, but he always provides the way of escape. In other words, if we fall prey to temptation, we've got nobody to blame but ourselves. God provides the way out, he does. Some of us might be facing temptation right now, you know, temptation to bail on the marriage, lockdown getting you down, you know, ruining the relationship. Maybe you're tempted to have an affair or go a different way. Maybe you're tempted to live in fear, you know. God is with us in these times of fear, when you're afraid of what the future holds, what your past has for you, you know, or loneliness or feeling isolated, um, feeling like nobody cares or nobody loves me, or, you know, if I disappeared, would it even matter? God is with us. God never forsakes us. God is there. Somebody once said, in every pain that rends the heart, the man of sorrows is a part. He understands. He knows, he empathizes, he's there. Remember, when Jesus, he was at the tomb of Lazarus, what did he do? The Bible says when he approached that Jesus wept. 
Jesus felt the loss. He understood the pain and the sorrow. Jesus was weeping there. And so when you're burying somebody that you love and that you care about and that you're close to, well, your heart's broken. Does Jesus care? Yes, he does. He empathizes. He sympathizes with your sorrow. I love I love Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Jesus said something that is only recorded in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. It's found nowhere in the Gospels. It's a very popular, famous phrase. The writer starts off in Hebrews and he says, Be content with what you have, which is great advice. For he, speaking about Jesus, says, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will never leave you or forsake you. That phrase is only found in the book of Hebrews, but it's so precious. It's so good. And so wherever you go, God is with us in the hospital, um, in fun times and bad times and good times. God is always there. Praise God. We cannot escape.